Welcome back to Baywatch X-Files edition, folks. Hope you're ready for thrills and chills. Thankfully, this is the last episode of Nights dealing with aliens and conspiracy bullshit. And I will say that it's maybe one of the better X-Files rip-off episodes, but it's also endlessly confusing and hard to watch, so, uh... I guess enjoy Terry Kaiser's guest performance. What do you know about shrimp tails and cereal boxes? What if I told you that Kate Middleton was replaced with a doppelganger? The Wonka experience was actually aliens, not AI. The oh, time of the demons. You're not gonna force me to emote like a human. Not even you, Romulus and Rebus. Eventually, Teague makes his escape from whatever the hell by jumping into the back of a truck. He survived another day, just like we've survived watching three full minutes of Teague stumbling around. Mitch and Ryan dutch every angle as they arrive at the hospital, where they're informed that even more footage was filmed of Teague in a drunken stupor. And, sadly, further footage will be sprinkled throughout the majority of this episode. He was found by Terry Kaiser, who was wondering if maybe there is a project he should have said no to. Unfortunately, the hospital just couldn't stop Teague from wandering as he staggered on out of there. He was mumbling a bunch of incoherent nonsense, so they called in Mitch and Ryan in the hopes that they could make sense of it. It was simply too strange that a patient in a fuzzy mental state would say something that doesn't make sense. As a doctor, this woman has never encountered such a thing. If you want to help, maybe you can find out what he was working on. Shouldn't we be looking for him? We already have people on that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Hospitals always have elite search teams, right, Mitch? I don't know. I'm gonna eat this rock candy now. Write me out of the episode with some exploding flowers or something. <laughs> That's right, exploding flowers to intro. Eat your heart out, Emmys! Terry Kaiser steals the rock candy, so Ryan makes chase while Mitch has a fart attack. Yeah! This is for the season and a half I spent getting held hostage and waiting around while Mitch did stuff. How is now any different? I do science while Mitch makes fun of me, so there! Teague, he's the key to everything, all right? What is the key to everything, and how do you know Teague? I don't know if I should tell you, you're not a lifeguard. Tell me now or you die! Terry Kaiser is George Wilson, who explains that the rock candy belongs to, you know, aliens. He's a conspiracy nut who is convinced the government is covering up an alien invasion. You know, like the X-Files. Baywatch Knights saw the lone gunman and thought, what if we made them one guy and not funny? And also, what if we condensed years of complex, overarching plot into one mediocre episode? Technically two, since this is a sequel of sorts. Ryan may or may not believe him, but he knows something about Teague, so she drags him back to the hospital so Mitch can- <laughs> My leg! How am I supposed to reach tall shelves for canned goods now? I'm gonna die if I can't eat a sloppy joe! Yeah, okay, never mind. I'm gonna take it from here. This is an episode I really would like to see the script for, as I'm convinced that they gave a big chunk of Mitch's scenes to Ryan, and that's why she actually gets to be the featured player for most of it. However, that doesn't mean she gets to do things without the guidance of main character Mitch, as she hilariously has to call him for permission every time she needs to so much as sneeze. I don't know the reason why they wrote him out, uh, but I'm guessing it's because he was shooting two shows at the same time. And I'm not sure how they were able to rewrite the scenes to not include him making some sort of drink in the background while throwing out snide comments, but somehow they pulled through. After casually mentioning that she can hack into Teague's computer, Ryan takes George along with her to the agency. I guess I'm not surprised that Ryan can hack into Teague's computer if Griff was able to do it, but I gotta say, this episode isn't great for Teague's image as a mysterious, secretive agent who's good at hiding stuff. Anywho, George thinks that Teague got sick because he got too close to the alien's rock candy whatever the hell. He makes a guess that Teague took the full charge of it, and that's why no one else we see handling it in this episode is affected. But Ryan touches it, like, a whole bunch before he even throws out this hypothesis. And at no point does anyone consider avoiding touching it as a precaution. 
He says that the rock is used for alien transferences, which he doesn't explain, and I'm confused, and so is he. Without it, the aliens have no source of power. I mean, no direction, they, you know, they even lose their ability to communicate somehow. Later on, he says the transference is them taking over people's bodies, which is what I thought he meant in the first place. So I don't know what he was talking about with the power and communication stuff. Well, anyway, George has a long, complicated history with Teague. He's been tracking these aliens for 10 years, and along the way, he's encountered Teague in several strange and exotic places. But as he explains, you don't meet Teague. You don't meet Teague. But he showed up. <laughs> kind of a good summary for Teague's non-introduction tonight. We never got to meet him, but he showed up. It's like Roswell times 100. Oh, shut up, Knights. It's like NASA and Steven Spielberg all rolled into one. Okay, now I genuinely don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, let's check on Teague. Hey, hey, get away. Great, thanks for the update. After repeating for the fifth, sixth, or 100th time that Teague is connected to the aliens and that's why he's sick, the episode decides to finally move forward with Ryan hacking Teague's computer. I'm not sure why he keeps his computer at the lifeguard detective agency, or why it just looks like their computer. But after confidently claiming she can hack into Teague's computer no problem, Ryan realizes she needs a password and is completely stumped. <laughs> what a hacker. Idiot didn't even try calling a lifeguard for help yet. I don't know. Did you try I'm a big moron and Mitch is smarter than me? <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> no, it's actually a very good password. Hello. No. Try aliens. Aliens. No. Try, um, it's me. It's me? Just try it. Yes. Wow, the dumb leading the dumb here. <laughs> Hasselhoff wasn't lying when he said the X-Files was too cerebral and Baywatch Nights was more like hockey. Mitch is just going around telling the hospital orderlies about their secret alien invasion plot. He does not give a fuck. Wow, you know how many times this guy calls Washington a day? Oh, come on. Ryan, who cares? It's my lack of curiosity that brings the viewers back week after week. Hauntings, poltergeists, beasts, sightings, crashes, contact, experiments, alien encounters, formations, discoveries, <laughs> Cool. Glad he hid all of that info under the ironclad password of It's Me. No wonder he's one of Washington's top guys. He's like Roswell times a hundred. Contact, man! It was contact! trying to act over there. It's me! Your password is it's me! Urgh, you're so stupid! In the most shocking twist of all time, Baywatch Knights remembers they encountered aliens before, an attempt to have some sort of continuity? Do you remember that kid you saved in the surf? Clear day lightning? Hmm, struck by lightning. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Apparently, the aliens Teague have been following are the ones that landed with the alien boy Mitch was psychically connected to after being struck by lightning. This makes sense if you remember nothing about that episode, where there was no rock candy, they didn't take over people's bodies, and their backstory was that they had crash-landed and were trying to leave. But this episode explains that away by saying Jake was just a dummy and he didn't know. There are secrets. What secrets? So many secrets. I'm not sure why the aliens would pretend to crash land for this one random alien kid's benefit, but all right. Now we're told that they're trying to take over the world, presumably by infiltrating the Knights Templar. They also said that they crash landed six years ago in that episode, but somehow George has been tracking them for 10 and also following Teague around for two, uh, but maybe Teague was tracking other aliens since they only encountered Jake less than a year ago, unless Teague was pretending not to know about them or Baywatch Night season two is actually extended over several years, diverging from the timeline of Baywatch proper. We know it must be sometime before 1999, when the ozone layer collapses and the world ends. Unless, of course, Mitch diverted that with his lifeguard skills, or we've split into a multiverse. Teague refers to something as it, and it's supposed to occur day after tomorrow. Do you know what it is? No. Why would this doctor know about any of this? Why is he telling her everything? Y you want to know what it is? I'll tell ya. Nothing. They never say what it was that was supposed to happen the day after tomorrow, and it's never brought up again, and no one is even remotely concerned about it or interested in it. 
fuck you if you even want to vaguely follow the plot. Dum Dum Ryan can't figure anything out without big, strong Mitch to guide her. So he tells her to check under Teague's car info to see if he has a security device that can track it down. When'd you get so smart on me? Well, I've always been a genius. <clears throat> After encountering some helpful car thieves at a chop shop, Ryan and George are directed to the car's last location. Aliens I'm afraid of, not guys with tattoos. There aren't any aliens. File this under evidence that Ryan was given Mitch's lines. Mitch is an idiot who loves to gaslight people, but Ryan has had multiple conversations in this very episode about the aliens they've encountered and how aliens are real. Anyway, these big, obvious power lines the aliens left sticking out of the dirt for no reason seem suspicious. Yay, more rock candy, let's touch it! Oh no, I've done something without Mitch for two seconds! I've gotta give him a call! <gasps> Hope he's with his mother! Mitch wants us to wake! <gasps> and they have to listen to the all-powerful Mitch! Some exploding flowers won't stop him from arriving at the scene to belittle everyone with disinterest! We're at a full 90 degree angle at this point! Fix the damn camera! I am Mitch Von Malibu! Ambulances are my chauffeurs! <laughs> I think Hasselhoff falls over at the end of the take here? At last, Ryan and George have encountered the Spencer's Gifts Room. There's no tacky light-up appliance that can't be repurposed as some sort of alien, uh, thing. This is where the rock candy is being used to transfer aliens into dead bodies which is the first time the dead body part has ever been mentioned and the clearest this episode has been as to what the hell is going on. <laughs> oh, no one stops me from bumbling into danger! That's it? That's really the props we're using? How much money do we have? Two dollars? Why is it so warm in here? Life is controlled by temperature. I have something to do with it. You ever watch something and feel yourself actively getting dumber? Like, truly, you feel like your mental capacity is diminished for having watched it? That's Baywatch Nights for me right now. Wait, why is Teague there? They just told us they're taking over dead bodies. Well, I guess he's an alien zombie for the rest of the show. Who cares? And here's what the aliens really look like. Glowing brains. Pretty spooky, huh, folks? Bet you can't wait for us to continue this storyline in Season 3. Did someone ask for some zombie aliens? Even on crutches, I have the strength of ten men! <laughs> I do enjoy this, though. It's dumb, but enjoyable dumb. And thank goodness they explained that they're zombies now for some reason. Otherwise, Mitch just killed a shit ton of people. Now that this one random warehouse is gone, all of the people possessed by aliens are dropping dead again. So, to recap, Ryan teams up with a guy who's been looking into this for a decade in pursuit of their mysterious benefactor who's been investigating these aliens with all of his government resources for who knows how many years. And right at the end, lifeguard Mitch Von Malibu shambles into the story on crutches and basically single-handedly stops the alien invasion of Earth. This is where we're at at this point. <laughs> Remember his humble beginnings as a lifeguard dad in the 80s? <laughs> yes, that's correct. My password was, it's me. Oh, I'm fired? I see. Well, that's fair. At least I'm magically cured of my sickness for some reason. And this is only LA. I mean, how many power stations do you think there are across this country? How about across the world? How about a cup of coffee? Not our problem. The end. Next time on Baywatch, Caroline is sued for being a bad lifeguard. Meanwhile, CJ wants to make baby. 